Creek Music Festival here in Grand Prairie and I'm meeting with Lee and Bianca who actually are Freddie and Francine is your stage name. So let's just start off. How'd you get the name? <laughs> well, great question. We've never heard it before. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, so 10 years ago when we started writing songs together, we wrote a song and we deemed the genre of this song 1950s prom rock, which is a big uh, genre in the States. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> and we, so we wrote the song and we performed it for the first time at a kosher Jewish Chinese restaurant in Los Angeles. Why not, right? Uh, called Genghis Cohen, important detail. That's right. And That's right. we performed it for the first time and we said, okay, everyone, this is our 1950s prom rock ballad. Everyone grab a partner, get on the dance floor, and come up with a really cheesy 50s name. And he said, I'll be Freddie. And I said, I'll be Francine. And by the end of the song, everyone was like, Freddie and Francine. And then just stuck in 10 years later, here we are. Okay. Well, that is like the most interesting, like, mix mash story. Yeah. <laughs> really. So, Lee and Bianca, um, you guys are both over 30 and I so I want to hear tell me your story since turning 30 I guess that's more of a Lee question because Bianca is turning 31 soon yep. ah but you know tell me your guys' story or I guess what's happened in the last year for you but what's happened since you turned 30 since I turned 30 well my, my 20s seem like a blur I think most of our 20s are a blur. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I felt like I was still just a child all the way up, frankly, until like 32 or 33. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of personal stuff, you know, through my 20s trying to figure out, A, being a musician is really just challenging how to make a life in this world. Um, but really, like in the last few years, uh, about four years ago, I got sober. That really changed a lot and helped me to grow up a ton. And um, yeah, I think getting through my 20s allowed me to get to a place in my life where I really needed a major change. I needed to, I don't know, put some stuff behind me and realize that life is really in session and happening and I need to be a part of it, uh, whether I like it, what the circumstances are. And I just need to show up and. I, I'm really excited to be in my 30s, right? I, I love, I love, I was excited about getting into my 30s too. Like, yeah, so, so many things were happening to my friends who had already been 30 and above. So I was like, oh, wow, look at what's happening. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been good. I mean, I just like the person I am more than I did when I was in my 20s and younger. And I know this person more. Yeah. I know what I like, I know what I can't stand, I'm afraid, I mean, I'm less afraid to stand up for myself. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of stronger, more planted in who I am. Yeah. And what about you, Bianca? What's happened this last well, year? You know, you can tell me more of that. <laughs> no, but it's true, this last year has been really um, big for me in the transition. And I, and I always, and I've heard about that from people, that 29 to 30 is a big change. And I didn't realize how much of a change it would be. And I think for me, I've learned a lot about quality over quantity as far as friendships go in my life. In your 20s, it's about having lots of friends and lots of people in your life. And I think you start kind of whittling it down to just like a core group of people. And in addition to that, like disappointing people, I'm getting better at disappointing people. Whereas my 20s were all about like people pleasing, yeah. making sure I was like the best at everything. And now I'm like, I don't really want to do that. And then being <laughs> less busy and like enjoying the time when I'm not busy because I know the busyness will come. Yeah. So I've been learning a lot and I'm really looking forward to getting deeper into my 30s and just knowing myself more and not having to apologize as much. Yeah, I think that you're going to you're going to learn that a lot in your yeah. 30s. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of your guys' biggest accomplishments then? Accomplishments. Well, I would say we just played the Telluride Bluegrass Festival in June in uh, Telluride, Colorado, which is an amazing festival, and some of the like, greatest musicians that we admire have played that festival. That was a really big deal for me, anyway, this year, to be able to play that stage, because I admire so many folks who've been up on that stage. And so that was a big deal. Um, we've made what, five records together. That's a huge accomplishment yeah. in my mind for, for I always wanted to be a musician. And so, if, you 
you know, whether or not you're internationally recognized, the reality is that we do it and we put out our own, uh, our own expression no matter what, and we're able to follow that through. Uh, I was in a Broadway play in my early 30s that really changed my life. Uh, and I toured all over the United States and here in Canada, and I did it in Japan, and that really taught me how to be a professional. Yeah. It was a big deal for me. Yeah. So, all these great things have happened, all these great things are happening. What kind of attitude do you think you possess to reach your accomplishments? Um, well, we. We are fiercely determined to make a living doing this and not at a level that seems unattainable, at a level that we feel is doable for us. And, and I, it's not about reaching being famous or anything like that. It's just about coming to places and performing your music or our music and being respected and treated well. And when, the, when all those things are true, it's the best feeling in the world. And if you can just sustain that throughout the year and you know, and not overworking or running yourself into the ground, um, it's a really it, it, it's a it's a presence that I've never experienced. Just, you know, like today we were doing a workshop and it's those moments where you're like, this is my job. This is my job. I do this and I get paid to do this for a living. This is exactly what I wanted to do when I was 13 years old. And now I'm doing it. And that's such a cool thing. So I, I just feel like we are, we're determined to make this work, you know? Yeah, I think, I feel like a lot of gratitude. You know, I think it's really easy to sit around and go, this is not at all like I wanted it to be. Oh, I wish I was someplace else. You know, compare myself to other people. And it, it never makes me happy. But like you're saying, if we're up on stage with a bunch of really talented people, people who love listening to music and just being in the middle of that, it's amazing, just having opportunities. And I think the bottom line, the attitude for us is like, we've had a ton of part, we've split up the band for a while, come back together, I think. The idea is just don't stop, no matter what. Just do it forever. And things begin, the ball gets rolling when you just, it's not just perseverance, just showing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. <laughs> So we got just finished talking about how what kind of attitude you think you possess to reach your accomplishments. Now we're switching into how do you overcome fear and negative thinking? Um, okay, so I was saying, I was referring to a moment yesterday uh, before a workshop. We are not used to the way that you guys do workshops at festivals. Usually it's that we go and we teach harmony or songwriting. But in this case, it's a lot of collaborating with other people, and, and so it, it means that you can start to get very, um, feel like you're not as good as others, or start uh, competing, or feel like you have to do something differently in order to stand out. But in those moments, you realize that all you have to do is just be yourself, and you are enough, my therapist tells me. Um, <laughs> and those are, those are hard moments to get to sometimes, but you really have to can't all of a sudden be someone else you can't all of a sudden possess all the talents of someone else you just have to sit in and I think like lean into the fact that you are here for a reason and because of that you will succeed and it doesn't have to be this overly successful thing you don't have to reach for the stars it's just like you're there bring your talents share your talents and be grateful to be there that's how I deal with it yeah I'm just terrified all the time that's how I do it no, I mean, I do I do deal with a lot of fear, I think, like everybody, but I don't know, I think as you get a little bit older, that's the theme we're talking about, you get enough hard evidence that all feelings and negative thinking and fear and all this stuff passes. In the moment, it goes away. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm able to somehow use that perspective of experience to let myself know in the present moment that things will come around, it will change. And like Bianca's saying, just show up. Just show up and put yourself in the situation. It's like, fear never really goes away. It's doing the action despite the fear. Or, wow. It's Somebody once called that fear-facing. I'm not fearless, I'm fear-facing. Right. 
you end up doing a lot yeah. of things in your life that are big deals or new with a lot of fear, but you're doing it anyway. And then that adds to uh, that bank of experience that allows you to, um, you know, to face more new things as you go along. And constantly put yourself at the growth edge. Right. Because yeah. it's only at the edge where you start be seeing what the next part is out there to try to face. And I think that's also getting older, you start to sit in the discomfort and know that that's good. It's normal. It's normal, <laughs> it's good, and it actually helps you become uh, better suited in those experiences because you know it's not not the end of the day if it doesn't go extremely well. And also, like, you're going to have other opportunities. So just, just get used to that discomfort. Mm -hmm. I've often said I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. Yeah, that's how we yeah, feel. And, and everyone else is, uh, everyone else is making it up as they go along too. You know, not everybody has all the answers and, you know, so you, you, I think when I realize that it equalizes and it levels the playing field and there's a sense of, oh, well, I bet you this person could gain something from me and my experience just as much as I can from them. If I put it that way, then, I mean, because often these big opportunities include other humans. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as we're talking on a global, worldly level, if you could give the world one piece of advice, that being the world, what would it be? Be really nice to yourself. Because, like I was saying, you're just making it up as you go along and you've never been a human being before. So it's like, I've been really hard on myself most of my life. It's not worth it. It's hard to get rid of, but if you can have just little, you know, percentages more of kindness towards yourself. I think life will be easier. I like it. Bianca? Thinking so hard about <laughs> I know it's it. profound, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I would say it's like a mishmash of things. Um, like, don't make excuses and, like, go for it, even if you're going to fail. Like, you know, there's a lot of people who are starting out and they're like, I don't want, I don't know how to tour, I don't know how to do this. It's like, just book a show. Just book several shows. It's so easy. It's just, the hardest part sometimes is like sitting down to do the job, like taking the pen out to write the song, starting to type, just start the process and it's going to be really bad before it gets good. So don't be afraid of the outcome. Just go for the process. Mm -hmm. Like that. So I asked you earlier if you guys are a couple and you told me that you're engaged. So the next question is, what are your future plans? Well, marriage. <laughs> marriage. Um, <laughs> no. um, we we want to, you know, share this life and, and tour as much as possible and also not so much that we want to kill each other. And because it's a lot, it's a lot touring as a as a couple and a, you know a band it's it's not it's and not having a business and having a business it's there's a lot not a lot of separation but we've managed and we've done a really good job because you guys have been doing this how many years together well we've been doing touring pretty solidly for the last three years but we've been writing songs together for 10 years and it's been up and down and all over and so we've really gotten to a good place in the last three years so that's what i want to do i just want to make a living and i'm really healthy happy way. Yeah, I want to keep doing exactly what we're doing uh, while, while keeping our eye on, on moving forward, not just career-wise, but artistically, and um, <clears throat> being true to what we are as we evolve and making music that, and recording music that fits into who we are truthfully, and also, you know, just make a whole lot more cash. <laughs> Not a whole lot more, but honestly, you know, just, I mean, have those things just kind of... That just extra little cushion comfort. Yeah. Don't we all want that? Yeah. Well, we, we, I personally would love to move out of Los Angeles. <laughs> that's where home is? That's where home is, yeah. That's where home is, and uh, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, frankly. I'm from there, and it's, uh, it's worked out so far, but I'm not... I've just, we've traveled so many places that I like more. <laughs> not that I've, 
<clears throat> lived in them, but I, I just like to try something else for a while. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Okay, well, can you give up the nine kids for the move? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank you for coming here and being part of our festival. Thank you for sharing your story. And I look forward to hearing more of what happens to uh, Freddie and Francine, a.k.a. Lee and Bianca. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so, so much for we. having us. Thank you. Feel like I am going